Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to provide a demonstration of how to create a confidence interval around a sample proportion using SPSS. So be sure to download a copy of the data to follow along. So on your screen, you see that there are two variables. There's one voted 2016, and then there's uh, plan vote uh, two. So basically the voted 2016 variable just represents whether a person uh, expressed that they did vote during the 2016 election or did not vote during the 2016 election. So uh, a value of zero indicates a person saying that they did not vote. A value of one indicates that they did vote. So let's say that I want to compute uh, the proportion of, uh, of our sample. We have uh, basically 15 uh, cases uh, for this particular variable. And uh, let's say I want to compute the proportion of the sample uh, that uh, indicated that they did vote during the 2016 election. Moreover, let's say that I want to create a, a confidence interval around that sample proportion using that uh, basically using the sample proportion as a point estimate of the population proportion and uh, using the confidence interval as an as an interval estimate of a population proportion. So the way that we can do this is to go to analyze, go down to compare means and proportions, and then go down and click on one sample proportions. So when we click uh, right here, this box is going to open up and we're going to move the voted 2016 variable over to the test variable box. So down below, you'll see that it says um, you have an, um, where it says define success. So the success is basically the outcome of interest. And, and in this particular case, our outcome of interest is uh, that the person indicated that they uh, voted in the 2016 election. So the easiest way to uh, to uh, kind of specify our, our um, outcome of interest is to click down here where it says value and then type in the value on our variable that represents uh, this, uh, the success outcome, basically in our case, again, that they voted in the 2016 election. So that value happens to be one on this particular variable. So the next thing that we'll do is we're going to click on confidence intervals and this box will open up. And so there are various options for uh, confidence intervals. I'm going to actually just use the Clopper Pearson. So I'm going to clear this out and then and then click on select type. Well, actually, we'll just uh, clear this, clear these others out and I'll select Clopper Pearson. Um, and then the next thing that we'll do is we'll click on continue and on uh, OK. So now in our output, what you see right here, uh, you'll see first off we have the sample proportion. The sample proportion was 0.533, which is just basically computed by taking the ratio of the number of successes, which is the number that indicated that they did vote, to the total number of observations, which is 15. So the 0.533 uh, basically that just indicates that 53.3% of the sample indicated that they did vote during the 2016 election. The uh, Clapper Pearson uh, confidence interval, uh, by default, uh, we have this set for 95% confidence interval, and you can see that we have the lower bound for our interval estimate and the upper bound. So the lower bound of our of our interval ranges uh, is uh, 0.266. The upper bound is 0.787. So that's going to serve as an as an interval estimate of the population proportion. And the remaining part of the output really is uh, irrelevant to uh, to what we're doing uh, right now in terms of just generating our confidence interval. So I'll also say too that uh, when we run our analysis, we'll go back through that. Let's say we wanted to change our confidence interval. Let's say instead of a 95% confidence interval, we wanted a 99% confidence interval. We can just change that uh, setting where it says coverage level to 99, click on continue and then on OK. And so now you can see in our output that uh, the confidence interval is a 99% confidence interval. So that's basically all there is to it. 
Now let's say that, uh, you know, if we go back to our data set, let's say that uh, we had, uh, let's say our target event, our success category, if you will, was the category uh, of zero, which is uh, essentially reflecting uh, individuals who did not vote in the 2016 election. So in that particular case, uh, we're basically asking what proportion of individuals did not vote in the 2016 election. So in that case, uh, what we would do is uh, instead of using uh, the success value being one, we would just change this to zero and, uh, you know, basically go through the same process as what we had done before. I'll go ahead and set this at 95 uh, for 95 percent right here. We'll click on continue and then on OK. And so now you can see that our uh, proportion, our sample proportion is 0.467, which is essentially uh, the number of you know successes. And when I say success, I don't mean it in terms of a positive outcome. I just mean in terms of the number of, uh, of uh, target outcomes that occurred. In this case, there were seven out of 15 uh, cases that indicated that they did not vote in the 2016 election. So that's just seven divided by 15. That gets us to 0.467. Obviously, that is also equivalent to one minus the proportion of successes or the one minus the proportion of individuals who indicated the, that they did vote. So that's the 0.467 that you see right here. Uh, so we also have our 95% confidence interval uh, which ranges from a lower bound of 0.213 to an upper bound of 0.734. Okay, so um, let's say that we now want to look at, um, let me kind of clear that off. Let's say that we want to look at this variable right here. So let's say that we have our 15 individuals who not only indicated whether they voted in 2016, but also whether they intend to vote in uh, in an upcoming election. So let's say in terms of the uh, coding, we have values of one and two. One reflects um, the, uh, the intention not to vote and a value of two reflects an intention to vote in, uh, the, in an upcoming election. So we basically would follow the same process that we did before. So let's say that uh, I want to compute the proportion of my sample that uh, expressed an intention to vote. And, uh, you know, again, we're using that as a point estimator of a population proportion. Uh, and I also want to compute uh, the confidence interval around that, uh, that uh, sample proportion to serve as an interval estimate of a population proportion. So in this case right here, the target outcome or the success out uh, category, if you will, uh, would be two. Uh, and so to, to carry out our analysis, we would go to analyze, compare means and proportions, go to one sample proportions, we'll reset everything and we'll move the plan vote two over to the test variable box where it says value down below, we're going to type two uh, because that's our target outcome. Then for confidence intervals, uh, we'll uh, again, we'll sort of uh, reset everything and just kind of um, click off of these and we're just going to select Clopper Pearson exact um, for our um, for our confidence interval. So next we'll click on continue and then on OK. And so looking at our output, you can see that uh, we had fi uh, five cases, five observations out of 15 that indicated a plan to vote. So the outcome was intend to vote, as you can see right here. So the proportion is 0.333. It's just basically five divided by 15. That's a third. So it's just rounded off at 0.333. So that is uh, the proportion of cases in our sample data that indicated a plan to or an intention to vote in, the, in an upcoming election. And then the 95% confidence interval, it ranges from 0.118 to 0.616. If uh, instead we had uh, wanted to generate the confidence interval the, uh, and the proportion uh, associated with those intending not to vote, then we would use the other value on that variable. So in this case right here, we would just go to uh, compare means and proportions again, one sample proportions, would re reset this to one, 
we'll leave everything as is, uh, as we had done before, and click on OK. And so now, uh, looking at uh, our output, you can see that we had 10 successes, basically 10 individuals that indicated that they intend not to vote in the election. So that's 10 out of 15. So that gives us a proportion of 0.667 or 66.7% of our sample indicated that they do not intend to vote in an upcoming election. And obviously that number is just equal to one minus the proportion that we had seen before that uh, express an intention to vote. So uh, we had 33.3% of the sample indicated an intention to vote, 66.7% 6, of the sample uh, indicated an intention not to vote. And the 95% the confidence interval uh, for uh, the in, intention not to vote ranges from 0.384 to 0.882. So that would serve as our interval estimate of the proportion of uh, individuals in a population from which our sample is drawn uh, that um, intend not to vote in an upcoming election. So that's basically all there is to it in terms of generating uh, our sample proportions and uh, confidence intervals. So I uh, hope you found this useful and thanks for watching. You guys have a great day.